Hello. So I'm going to read to you chapter five of James and the Giant Peach. So go get your snack. The next moment, James was running back toward the house as fast as he could. He would do it all in the kitchen, he told himself. If only he could get there without Aunt Sponge and Aunt Spiker seeing him. He was so excited. He flew through the long grass and the stinging nettles, not caring whether he got stung or not on his bare knees. And in the distance, he could see Aunt Sponge and Aunt Spiker sitting in their chairs with their backs toward him. He swerved away from them so as to go around the other side of the house. But then suddenly, just as he was passing underneath the old peach tree that stood in the middle of the garden, his foot slipped and he fell flat on his face in the grass. The paper bag burst open as it hit the ground and the thousands of tiny green things were scattered in all directions. You see, there's James. James immediately picked himself up onto his hands and knees and started searching around for his precious treasures. But what was this? They were all sinking into the soil. He could actually see them wiggling and twisting as they burrowed their way downward into the hard earth. And at once he reached out a hand to pick up some of them before it was too late, but they disappeared right under his fingers. He went after some others and the same thing happened. He began scrambling around frantically in an effort to catch hold of those that were left, but they were too quick for him. Each time the tips of his fingers were just about to touch them, they vanished into the earth. And soon, in the space of only a few seconds, every single one of them had gone. James felt like crying. He would never get them back now. They were lost, lost, lost forever. But where had they gone to? And why in the world had they been so eager to push down into the earth like that? What were they after? There was nothing down there. Nothing except the roots of an old peach tree and a whole lot of earthworms and centipedes and insects living in the soil. But what was it that the old man had said? Whoever they meet first, be it bug, insect, animal, or tree, that will be the one who gets the full power of their magic. Good heavens, thought James. What is going to happen in, in that case if they do meet an earthworm or a centipede or a spider? And what if they do go into the roots of the old peach tree? Get up at once, you lazy beast! A voice was suddenly shouting in James's ear. James glanced up and saw Aunt Spiker standing over him grim and tall and bony, glaring at him through her steel-rimmed spectacles. Get back over there immediately and finish chopping those logs! Aunt Sponge, fat and pulpy as a jellyfish, came waddling up behind her sister to see what was going on. Why don't we just lower the boy down the well in a bucket and leave him there for the night? she suggested. That ought to teach him not to laze around like this the whole day long. Oh, that's a very good idea, my dear Sponge. But let's make him first finish chopping up the wood. Be off with you, be off with you at once, you hideous brat, and go do some work. Slowly, sadly, poor James got up off the ground and went back to the wood pile. Oh, if he only hadn't slipped and fallen and dropped that bag. All hope of a happier life had gone completely now. Today and tomorrow and the next day and all the other days as well would be nothing but punishment and pain, unhappiness and despair. James picked up the chopper and was just about to start chopping away again when he heard a shout behind him. 
that made him stop and turn.